Okay, this is my Frankie Valley story. This is the first time I actually met him. This is the third year I'm working at Archer's. Sonny D had already left. The chef that they were flying out to cook for Sinatra. And Serafino, the one who took over for Sonny D, he had to go away for a week. So I was the saute man, second in command at that point. So they put me at chef position. Now, after, I'm going to say, nine years of cooking, I finally made it to Chef of the Archers for a week. Now, for you people who don't know the Archers, it was 400 people every night, uh, five crime families, uh, tens of politicians, everybody with the same agenda, of course, and the place is jam-packed all the time. It's the place to be. It's right over the George Washington Bridge, so it's really like the hot spot of all of New York City and New Jersey. It's Sopranos, uh, so, you know, beyond. But at any rate, the maitre d' comes running in and says, look, Frankie Valley wants to meet the chef. And I'm like, whoa, sure, tell us, send them in. So, you know, I'm thinking back to when I was like six years old, I'm singing rag doll on top of a roof, making believe I'm Frankie Valley. And I'm like, holy shit, I want to meet Frankie. So now, he comes walking in and he gets this 24 year old kid. I don't even know if I was 24, but I'm like 24 years old. And uh, I get to, you know, we shake hands and he's, he's like amazed that I'm the chef and I'm amazed like, holy shit, it's Frankie. And you know, and uh, it was just a very, uh, very unbelievable time in my life. A few years later, he sees me walking through a dining room uh, of a restaurant I co-owned, Picolissimo. And at that time, my father had passed away and I opened the bar down the block and I had the Picolissimo jam packed and I was really depressed. And I went up to Frank and he called me actually. He, called, he, he, he recognized me. The guy's got a memory like you wouldn't believe. And, and so I go over to his table and I candidly just said to him, I said, Frank, how did you handle your success? I said, I've got a bar down the block, Michael's, if anybody remembers it, and I've got this um, Picolissimo that's running hot, and, and uh, I lost my father, and you know, some of my friends, they got green eyes, they're not talking to me, I don't, you know, I don't know, I just, I'm not in a good place, and he said, Mike, your life's gonna go in waves, and you better get used to it. He said, you know, I lost a daughter. I lost a stepdaughter. I lost, I went through two marriages. I got divorced twice. And your life is gonna go in waves. And he says, I almost went broke. So you better get used to it. So uh, it was from then on, uh, well, maybe three weeks later, he flew me out to uh, Los Angeles and we're sitting in Sonny Bono's restaurant and Cher is there and Goldie Horn and uh, they're all coming over to the table. Boom Boom Mancini, Frank Stallone, um, uh, Goldie Horn. I, it was, uh, it was, uh, you know, it was just magical. And that's my Frankie Valley story. And to this day, uh, we remain friends.